Welcome back to QAC TV, everyone. It's Ask a Commissioner. We're here with Commissioner Dumanil and Commissioner Corcorino, and we're in a very special uh, little room here today. We're at the Mattapeak Middle School. Welcome, guys. It's Ask a Commissioner. Student, Tell us. Student edition. That's right. So what are we doing here at the Mattapeak Middle School? So um, we're actually taping a segment of Ask a Commissioner. Um, and uh, basically, uh, these segments that we started, this is actually the fourth segment. Uh, the first one, we touched on the bridge and traffic, and that was done by Commissioner Jack Wilson and Commissioner Jim Moran. Uh, the second one we did uh, was with myself and uh, Commissioner Jack Wilson, and we addressed the issues of connectivity and broadband connectivity in the county. Um, and then the third one was myself and Commissioner Steve Wilson, and we spent uh, several hours with uh, our sheriff's office, our, our county sheriff, Gary Hoffman, and then also Scott Wheatley, one of our command officers at the Department of Emergency Services. So these segments are designed to bring some information about what's going on in the community. And Commissioner Chris Corcorino and I thought that we wanted to change things up a little bit and get a perspective from um, the youth here in our community. So we figured that we would do this next segment and answer questions that um, our panel of eighth graders here at Mattapique Middle School have regarding what they believe or what they want to know what Queen Anne's County Commissioners do and what our responsibilities are. So, but before we get started, I want to say real quick, I want to thank Dr. Kane uh, for the opportunity to do this and of course the principal here at Mattapique Middle School, Dr. McCoy. So folks, thank you very much. Yeah, and we have our kids here up front. And they, uh, they had a fog delay already, so you're starting late. And now you get to get out of class and you get to come here. So really, you're, you're missing everything today. You're, yeah, you guys are having already. a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is your day. You're not going to class at all. So you're missing math and science. So I know you guys are happy to be here. Are you ready to ask some questions, have some fun with these guys? Yeah. All right, me too. So I know you guys are excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. Is, yeah, and we, we already tr you try you tried to cheat. I need to tell the audience that you tried to cheat and get their questions before we even came up here because you were afraid of what they were going to ask. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I saw you were looking at the shoulder <laughs> trying to read the questions yeah. and then you were Googling the answers. Yeah, yeah. So one of the most important things, you guys, you have to remember uh, about um, being an elected official at any level, whether it be federal, state, I or can't wait local, for this. <laughs> is, is being prepared, <laughs> is being properly prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we have our commissioners up here. They're going to have a good time. I say we just start getting some questions. Sure. And then we'll start plugging away at some people that we have to talk about in the back of the room my as we go just along. My over there and was waiting. So if you saw me waiting on camera, it was my daughter walking by. You, so she was actually proud to see you. Yeah, I know. That's right? amazing. <laughs> That's great. Right. So who has a question that wants to go first? I'll go first. My <laughs> man. All right, we're going to go over here. All right, we're going to have every kid introduce themselves, be very proper, and then we're going to ask her a question and we're going to. Grill them. Don't, don't let them off easy. Hello, my name is Brendan, and my first question is, it's for both of you, is what is your main job as a county commissioner? Nice. I'll, I'll start. Okay. I mean, I think our, our main, really our main job, the way I see it, is to listen to what the citizens, what their concerns are, um, and also make sure we're doing our best to explain the different decisions that we make, the votes that we make. Um, not everybody is going to like a decision that you make, um, and you have to make sometimes some tough decisions that um, your neighbors might not like the way you voted on something. So what we try to do is make sure that we're listening to everybody so that they know we're understanding their concerns. And then when we make a vote, um, we open ourselves up to answer questions about why did we go that particular way? Because what we feel is that if the citizens know that we're listening to them and we're putting uh, thought behind that, um, even if they didn't agree with maybe the way we went on that, at least they know that we are taking everybody's considerations um, into effect. That's sort of like an overarching thing that we do. Phil, I think you probably have some answers on more specific stuff. So um, some of the more daunting tasks are balancing our budget. Uh, the county is required to submit to the state uh, a balanced budget each year. Um, so you're matching your revenue that you take in through income tax and, and property tax, and then you're paying bills. So think of income tax and property tax as our salaries that we're being paid, and now we got to pay our bills. We have to pay for education, which is close to 51% of every dollar that we take in. Um, 
So balancing a budget, submitting the budget to the state, um, setting ordinances and laws that that we will abide by here in this county, and with by design to pigtail on what Commissioner um, Corcorino was saying is make decisions and pass these laws that we hope would improve the quality of life here in Queen Anne's County for all our citizens, even our youth. Um, can I answer your question? Yeah, sort of, that, actually, I, and, and I think the goal for all of us is that um, you know, when when we leave our term, that hopefully we've left the county in a better condition it was than before us, um, and and make sure that we're we're doing the right thing. Let me ask: Does anybody know how many commissioners we have? Ooh, 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 hold on. Isn't it like five? It is five. And yeah. and do you know how how that breaks up? Do you know how many districts we have, or how those commissioners are selected? Okay, maybe that'll be one of the questions that they get later. Oh, yeah. is it on the list? So uh, a, right. a, a plus for uh, five. Is it, sure that's a spoil, spoiler yeah, alert, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's extra credit. Yes. All right, a I want- Reminder, uh, Commissioner Chris, that they're asking They're asking us the questions? Yes. So maybe we'll flip it on them at the uh, end. Okay. I didn't want them to be prepared for my questions. So. Right, right, right. <laughs> All right, uh, I can't let you off the hook without you knowing that you're gonna get random questions from me throughout. Uh, because I often ask, random questions. So since we're in the library, what's your favorite book? Hmm. Come Mockingbird. Stumped him. See, it like he was ready for you guys. Well, no, bad. I would say because I, 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 we were talking earlier about different authors, um, and I like John Grisham. So, but I'm trying to think of which one would be my favorite favorite of all of his books, and I'm not quite sure because I think the partner might be. Okay. So, so um, to kill a mockingbird, I, I'm, I'm guessing is probably in this library, and I thought that was the question you were asking. But I too prefer Grisham, Patterson, Clive Cussler, some of those exciting storylines. Well, the correct answer was Harry Potter, but it's all right, you guys tried. All right, do we have another question? All right. So hi, I'm Rain, and how do county commissioners become elected, and what is your campaign process? Hmm. Oh yeah, that was a good one. So, <laughs> So the uh, so the first part of the question. Um, so how do you guys how do you guys become elected? Uh, by the people. So um, there's an election process. Uh, the first stage is called the primary, and this is where the party affiliated groups select their candidate who's going to represent them in the general election. So in the primary election, you have your Republican candidates that are running to be selected and win the primary, and then you have your Democratic candidates that run in their primary to determine who's going to be the candidate representing the Democrats. And then in the general election, your Democrats and Republicans campaign to get selected to hold the five seats that are available. So that is... Um, the process and how it takes place. And the other part of your question. <laughs> um, what is your campaign like process? Like how do you do that? Um, How'd you win us over? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of campaign signs. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll answer real quick and then I'll let uh, Commissioner Chris uh, answer. So I think the, the one thing that's probably the most valuable to me as a candidate um, was the forums that, that we participated in. Um, the, act, uh, uh, the asking of questions about issues that were important to the people uh, at the time we were running for office and, and, and in, the, in the future. And so um, what are ideas for the county moving forward in education and, and growth and economic development and agriculture? These are all important issues. So we were, these forums asked us questions about where we stood on these issues and what our plans were moving forward. For me, that was probably uh, the most important tool when I was running for office. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that as being an important part. There's lots of things that we do, you know, putting out campaign signs, uh, waving at cars. Um, that's sort of the easy, the, the fun stuff. Uh, the most important thing that we do is, in addition to the forums, uh, we get out throughout the entire county to meet as many people as possible. Um, so you'll go to some people's homes and they'll have small groups there that you meet, question and answer session. Um, you'll knock on doors, a lot of doors, um, to meet people. Sometimes they see us and they don't answer the door because <laughs> they, <laughs> they think we're trying to sell something to them. Um, and what's really important in that process is that you are getting throughout the entire county. 
uh, because the issues that are important here in Ken Island are different than the issues up in North County in the Sutlersville area. And you get a much different perspective as you're going throughout the county. Um, something else about the actual election process, and I'm hopefully this is not taking away from a question that's coming up, but um, so we have five uh, seats for the commissioner, but we have four districts. So one of the commissioners is, uh, is an at-large. And the way that's broken up is if you want to run in the first district, you have to live in the first district. And there's the first, second, third, and fourth. And then the at-large can live anywhere in the county. Um, but everybody in the county votes for each one of those commissioners. So you don't vote just by the district. But the important thing about the way that's structured, the way we have the four districts, is the idea that a commissioner who lives in that specific district should hopefully have a better pulse on what's going on in that area. And that's why we divide it up like that. So we're all bringing a, a different perspective uh, to the board of commissioners and hopefully hearing from our neighbors. Great question. Yeah. All right. If you were in school right now and you could miss one class, what class do you hope that you would miss? Math. <laughs> Did you right. say that the same time? <laughs> That's good. So you and Jake are, are, are very together in this. That's right. All right. Who has the next question? All right. Coming over. Hi, I'm Georgia. What is, in, what is going in place of Kmart, and will it allow young high school students to get have opportunities for jobs? George, that's my favorite question you so far. You want to answer that one? Um, so I think there's a, so there's, there's, we don't know for sure what's going there. We don't, we don't know for sure what's going there because, um, but there are several opportunities. Um, in um, our commissioner's meeting last night, we had um, a press and public comment on Ordinance 1917. And what Ordinance 1917 is going to do is if any existing buildings in Queen Anne's County that are 64,000 square feet or larger, 65. 65,000 square feet or larger, and built before January of 2004, the ordinance allows the owner of the building or a potential tenant or buyer to increase the square footage of that building by 50%. The reason why this ordinance was introduced was if the, the, the business models today of, of your larger stores require more square footage. Our biggest concern is when Kmart left that the building would be vacant and, and really for a lack of better terms, be an eyesore in the community. Considering like, like the old outlets, at the like the old outlets, you know. Fortunately for us, they're tucked away. But the, the Kmart location is the first thing you see when you come across the bridge onto the eastern shore on the right-hand side. So this gives a business an opportunity that if it wants to come in and relocate at that location, it has the ability to increase the square footage of of the store to accommodate what their business plans are. But what will actually wind up going there, so an important thing to point out is, you know, the county does not own that building and the commissioners don't get to decide who a landlord would lease their building to. So that comes down to the landlord. What, what Commissioner Phil was talking about is our efforts to try to give that landlord a better opportunity to make sure there is a tenant in that space. And so why is that important? So that there are certain goods that you can't you might not be able to buy at different hours in the county it would enable you to do that it will also provide jobs so how will it affect high school kids uh, when the Kmart was there there were high school kids that worked there and some of them lost their jobs so if we could get another similar store like that in there that would create opportunities that's good so I'm gonna actually open it up to you guys now because I want to know if you could put whatever you want in that building what would you put in you want a Target? Yeah. So Georgia wants a Target. Right. What do you guys want to say? Like a Walmart. Like a Walmart? Walmart, Walmart. Jack, how about you? So, what would you like? Bowling alley. A bowling, bowling alley. A bowling alley. Jack wants a bowling alley. So Target, Walmart, bowling alley, anything. So that's cool. Lots of cool options. All right. Next question. I was just over there. <laughs> I'm getting tired already. I'm Isabel, and I was wondering how you plan to relieve the traffic in the summer on the Bay Bridge. <laughs> Remember we talked about post-show about the Fifth Amendment? <laughs> um, so w w what our plans are to uh, alleviate traffic? Is it, was that the question? Yes. Yeah, I think we could probably talk about the legislation that we sent to the delegates. Okay, you go that route. Okay. <laughs> and I'll play off you. <laughs> so it is a, a, a complex problem, the traffic. And if you've lived here long enough, you know that 
I've been here since 1988. People have been complaining about traffic since 1988. Um, and back when there was a ferry, I know people said they were complaining about traffic back then. So traffic is going to be an ongoing problem. Why? Because people like to go to Ocean City and more and more people go there. So the volume keeps picking up. One of the things that we're trying to do is get more control over the side roads, which are owned by the state. Um, so we have uh, developed some legislation that we sent to our local delegate and senator at, who are in session now in Annapolis to see if they can get a law passed that would give us more control over being able to regulate the flow of traffic on those side roads on the days when there's a lot of traffic so that people who are just driving through we can keep them on 50 and then if your parents are trying to take you to the store or a game that those side roads will be open that's one of the initiatives that we're working on right now so uh, the people that are traveling uh, through our county on Friday evenings and Saturday mornings and then of course coming back on Sundays are folks as Commissioner Chris had mentioned are heading to the beach so this traffic really isn't Queen Anne's County's traffic. It's not your traffic, it's not my traffic, it's the state's traffic. We are that pass-through, if you will, to Ocean City. So um, obviously you've heard the possibilities of a third bridge, a third span, and where they're gonna put that to try to alleviate some of the traffic. So those talks are going on in Annapolis. Um, there's a lot of different studies that have to be done to determine where that the best place for that bridge to go. Um, but we, it's a constant battle um, in dealing with the state and, and, and trying to, again, improve the quality of life for our citizens on those days where we're most affected by folks coming from the ocean and heading home or from home heading to the ocean. It, it's a major inconvenience. And as Commissioner Chris mentioned, having control of our side roads as to who can use them um, and keeping traffic on 50 and off our side rows is really what we're targeting and trying to do. And hopefully the legislation that we've requested in Annapolis, um, the Maryland Department of Transportation will see it our way and, and give us some latitude on controlling who goes on our side roads and who has to stay on 50. And, and there's other things that we do. So, you know, there's repairs going on with the bridge right now. And that was supposed to be a two-year process. And traffic was really bad. So we met with the state. We worked with them to try to see, is there a way that you can speed up that process and get it done? And right now, it looks like they may be done, those repairs, by sometime in May. So a whole year earlier is another way to try to lighten up that traffic. And as part of that, Bruce and I were up on the bridge watching them do the repair work and you may have seen a video that we put out for that so I those are the videos ways. the reason it sped up i i I'm pretty sure they were yeah. they were intimidated by you bruce, <laughs> bruce that's why they did it but those are some working with the state to try to find solutions to speed up repairs so that there's minimal impact that was a great question yeah, it was and somewhere and in there you they have some answers <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah we're gonna ask you that question <laughs> i actually heard them mention somewhere in there about a new span have you guys heard about the new span like they might build a third bridge that might be going on. Have you? What are you guys' thoughts on that? Do you think there should be a new bridge in the area, or do you think it should be somewhere else? Well, that's our next question. Oh, oh, oh! Okay. I like that ah. even more. Oh, I'm jumping the okay. gun. All right, who has that question? Me. I'm coming back to you, Georgia. I'm Georgia. Um, so, are there any plans on the third bridge, and if so, can you elaborate about that? Dynamite actually, question. <laughs> actually, you know that that that's a great question, and and often when we ask, yeah. <laughs> it actually gives us an opportunity to sort of also explain. I think what is a um, misconception about it being just a, a new crossing. It's not what the what the state is looking at doing is not just dropping a new bridge somewhere and then walking away. Um, it's what they call a whole corridor improvement. So, for example if it went here where the existing bridges are, they would be doing improvements from the 5301 split, uh, the, the 5097 split where the Annapolis Mall is, all the way to the 5301 split. So that would include creating other ways for the local traffic to get over 50 without having to go on 50, <clears throat> ways to keep people from getting off 50 on the side road. So it would not be just a bridge, it would be a whole quarter of improvements and estimated at over $5 billion. But it is a long process. If they were to decide tomorrow where they're going to put it, uh, we're still 10, 15 years away under the way things are currently done. 
to... Commissioner, that sounds like a lot of math. We, we try to get out of math so, <laughs> today. So uh, I, I could I be think, wrong. It could be a year. So one of the most important things to remember is there, there, there needs to be studies that are done to determine where the bridge will launch from and where the bridge will land. And that's some of the things that are going on in Annapolis. Um, and uh, there are some jurisdictions along the Chesapeake Bay that have already expressed concerns about having that bridge land on in, in their communities uh, because of the potential traffic that this bridge is going to be bringing. Uh, but there is, um, make no mistake, the governor agrees there needs to be a third one. They're just working on exactly where they're going to put it. See, they, they, good job. You, you stole the thunder of my question, but that's fine. So we're, we're going to change gears. Can, favorite, somebody, can favorite, somebody hand Bruce a question because yeah, yeah, he's all yeah, out now. Favorite superhero? There's so many, right? There are so many. Batman. <laughs> Batman? He has a solid name. Batman. I'm going to go with Iron Man. Iron Man? Yeah. Metal Batman? Yeah. Metal Batman. <laughs> Metal right. Batman. Okay. Another cool. A billionaire superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys like the, the superheroes with the money. That's right. I see a theme here. I like it. All right. Who has the next question? We're, we're always looking for new donors, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brendan, and my next question is, what is your process for budgeting and deciding which group of people gets the money? Oh, look, a money question after the bat. Oh, man, That's look. It's like we knew what we were doing. <laughs> well done, Mrs. C. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, the budget process. Um, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the timeline, yeah. right? So I'll do the timeline. So um, first of all, the budget process is always ongoing because a lot of decisions and ordinance and laws that are passed uh, are in an effort to try to streamline the cost of county government. Um, I talked about um, income tax and, and property taxes being our paychecks that come in, and then we have to pay bills with that. Again, and I mentioned education. But um, you look at the Queen Anne's County Department of Public Works and the folks that you know, maintain our roads, our side roads, and bring us water and sewer and, and all the things. And, and there are various departments of, of, of government um, that play an important role in the quality of our lives here in Queen Anne's County on a day-to-day -day basis. So the process of a budget is ongoing. We're constantly meeting with the Board of Education and, and, and uh, educating ourselves on what their concerns and their needs are to guarantee that our schools continue to be some of the best in Maryland. So just hats off real quick to our teachers. We got great educators here. And you guys are very lucky. Yep. Um, but we have, we have uh, budget hearings where we task our different department heads and supervisors to uh, bring us their first draft, if you will, of their budget. And then we tell them to cut some more out of it. Um, and we do this through uh, a process of budget hearings. Uh, we actually sit down and meet with um, our Board of Education uh, leaders and discuss uh, their budget and their needs. So it's, uh, and then eventually um, there are public hearings that we're required to have. And, and we bring the potential budget to uh, three separate meetings here in the southern part of the county, in the mid part of the county, and the north part of the county. and and bring this budget to the citizens of Queen Anne's County and, and get their feedback and concerns before it's actually submitted to the state. Right. And some aspects of the budget are sort of already set in place. We're required by law to do a certain amount of funding for different things. So that affects, uh, I would say, a large portion of our budget is what we have to do. Um, and the tension is trying to say, okay, so we have this pool of money now. How do we make sure we're dividing it up fairly amongst all the different agencies that need it? I would just give it all the TV. That that's one thought process. I think the Board of Education may not agree with yours. Make but, you know, make, that's we'll, we'll, we'll take that take, down. Let's take, take a close look note. at Bruce's budget. We'll okay? examine we'll examine that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, and, and then also trying to make sure, can, so with the pool of money, can we make sure we're providing all the essential services that the county needs without having to raise taxes, which has not been done for years, and, and our intent is to, to keep it that way. The state will sometimes mandate things that force you to spend more, and then you've got to say, okay, 
how do we do that with this with this pool of money we have in addition to the actual um, government agencies there are then outside agencies that will come and ask for uh, some money there are um, let's say a charitable group that has um, an event that they're going to put on that's going to benefit the public and they say we we need five thousand dollars in order to put this on and we get a, a large portion of that and the way we handled that last year is we allocated a certain sum to that and then each commissioner picked a handful of those that were important to them and then without talking with the other and then when we met we went through that um, and it worked out well as a way for us to each make sure we're trying to help a lot of different groups throughout throughout the country uh, throughout the county unfortunately there's there's just not enough money to do everything we would want to do um, w without increasing the taxes which is something that we're not inclined to do yeah, good. That was How, a good question. Yeah, it was. Yeah, absolutely. How old were you guys when you decided to get into politics? Hmm. That's not fair. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm older than he is. So this is my second go around. Um, I ran as a commissioner uh, and was elected for the term of 2011 to 2014. Um, and then was defeated in my re-election run by 82 votes. So that should tell you... Um, the daunting task at hand in getting reelected, um, but so uh, th that requires math. So I'm, I'm <laughs> four score and several years ago, <laughs> <laughs> roughly, roughly. Um, forty nine. Forty nine. All right. Fifty years old. So I, I, you could have lied. I, Jack, you thank you. I, I, Twenty two. Jack just said I don't. <laughs> Jack just said I don't look fifty eight. So you don't. Yeah. Um, Young at heart. So I, I've been a commissioner now for a year, and I put my name in a year before that. But it's something that I probably think I'd thought about for a long time. Um, I went to high school in Queen Anne's County and used to see what the commissioners do. And I guess a part of me back in my head thought, well, that would be neat to be able to do that one day and help out the community. Um, but, you know, you go... You have to graduate high school, you go to college, you go out and you work and you start building a family. It's, it's hard to find that time. So a, a decision that everybody has to make if they be a commissioner is there is a, a sacrifice that you have to take away from, from um, four of us have, have other jobs that we do during the day um, and we have families. So you, you take away a little bit of that to give back to the community, but you, you do that because you think you can make a difference and you can make things better. Well said. Yeah, yeah. excellent. All right, next question. You can right, edit go, that go out, right? right Oh, we're keeping it in. This is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my name is Tyler, and what is the local government planning on doing about the increase in drug use among teenagers and young adults? Excellent question. Yes. Very good. So we have um, um, a coalition that meets every month to talk about different programs uh, for both not just drug abuse but alcohol abuse, uh, and then we also have government agencies that work on that. Um, I think this year we have the number of overdoses are down. Mm -hmm. um, actually, and that's an improvement. Actually, statewide, yeah, uh, the overdoses in 2019 were down from 2018. Um, so, the work that's being done, right, is showing the results. It's it's um it's a very difficult issue to tackle, um, and to say that we can just implement some program and and the problem is going to be eradicated, you know, within a year. That's that's not going to happen. What 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 is important is um, if students like yourselves understand the dangers of alcohol and drug abuse, and that you know you can not only you die, you could ruin your life. Um, the effect it would have on your family and your parents if you got involved with stuff like that. If you can remember that and be a good friend to a friend of yours who you think uh, may start to experiment with drugs and alcohol. Um, and tell somebody about that if they're doing that. Early prevention is one of the most important things we can get because if you can prevent somebody from getting into drugs and alcohol, that's the strongest weapon that we have. So you guys are, in, in many ways, part of our first line of defense on that. So educational programs that we do, the Going Purple, you know, when we do that September, purple lights on, the purple shirts. Part of that is creating awareness mm -hmm. to let, let 
youngsters know about the dangers of drugs, but we also, through doing that, what we're trying to let families know who have loved ones who are suffering from addiction is that they're not alone and that other people are there and that there's a support system from, for them because in the past, I think um, there was a lot of families who were embarrassed. Uh, they had uh, someone in their family who was abusing drugs or alcohol and they were embarrassed to say anything, so they couldn't get the help that they need. That And that didn't help the situation. So we're shifting it more towards where we're understanding that um, and, and now those families are able to come forward and say, I, I need help with my son or my daughter or my mom or my dad. Um, and I think that's also what's helping to reduce it. So I would say, make sure you don't ever abuse alcohol and drugs. Make sure your friends aren't. Um, and if you see someone it is, you know, talk to somebody about it. Awareness, I think is the key. A awareness. So, yeah. excellent. I'm not even going to try to make a joke or a funny question after that. Uh, excellent question. Who has another one? All right. My name is Jack. And my question is, how come the local government does not give more money to schools considering the fact that they provide most jobs in the country? Phil? Read the, the <laughs> what was the last part? I'm sorry, get the mic closer. County. I'm 58. I'm County. How come local government does not give more money to schools considering the fact that they provide the most jobs in the county? So I heard he wants to know, are we building more dog parks? <laughs> was that the question? <laughs> so first of all, education. Um, is is important to all five of your commissioners. Um, we as, both have kids as in, Chris in, mentioned, in the school system. We have system kids here. in the school system. I have a son who graduated from Canal High School. Daughter goes there now, and um, I have a son who's an eighth grader at that other school. Um, <laughs> like which, by the way, I saw some which, kids by the way, their heads. They're like, no. They won the. Why you did that. They won the parenting for youth basketball championship. Stevensville Pirates. You, you keep trying to start fights when you yeah. go to these I know, this is what Turfy's on. <laughs> Education right? is extremely important to the commissioners. And as Commissioner Chris had mentioned earlier, there are mandates that come down from the state that require um, additional amounts of funding to education in the 23 counties in Baltimore City in the state of Maryland that say you funded this dollar amount last year and the maintenance of effort is your new number is this number. Um, how many of you are familiar with the, the Kerwin Commission? Anybody? Is that the, um, they want to raise taxes to like increase education? Well, so, that's yeah, that's probably the, the simplest way. The Kerwin Commission was a study that was done to try to fix and balance the education throughout the state of Maryland. We have counties that, that excel in education because we have great teachers and great procedures and systems in place. And there are other counties in the state of Maryland that are less fortunate. So part of the Kerwin Commission one is, is to determine um, what additional monies have to be funded. I'm trying to keep it simple. Additional monies that need to be funded and targeted to education to ensure that the quality of education that our kids are getting in Maryland statewide is adequate. Um, so it's it's an, it's important. It's important to properly fund education. And the, there's a balance. Yeah, it is for the, the all the other side, services. The flip side of that, the flip side is that is there are other services that need to be funded. And I had mentioned earlier, somewhere between 50 and 51 cents for every tax dollar we collect goes into education. So, but um, it's it's difficult and having to weigh. Those are some of the challenges of being an elected official, whether it be at a county level or a state level or even a federal level. It's the balance between funding education. Um, to the amounts that w we need to continue that the schools in Queen Anne's County stay great schools. Um, but that's a... And, and a lot of the other agencies <laughs> that we fund, the, the other agencies that we fund also um, it, it sort of gets lost in the mix, but they contribute to the educational system as well, right? So you fund the Department of Public Works so that we can have roads that are properly paved and, and, and plowed when it snows so that school buses, you know, can get to the school. Uh, fund the Sheriff's Department so we have school resource officers. Uh, parks and Rec so we can have additional activities for kids. So there's a lot of money that goes to a lot of things. Um, you know, if we could give a huge every percentage penny, more every to education, that, we would, but there are other other priorities it, that we it, have to do. So it's a balancing act, and it's very, very difficult. If it was possible to give um, the Board of Education all the money they needed. They're writing this down, Phil. 
<laughs> if that was if that was possible to give them every penny that they needed and we could give that to them we wouldn't think twice we'd do it but as commissioner chris said there there are other obligations that we have uh, and other areas where we need to channel those monies to make sure that the county continues to run on a day-to-day -day basis and just like if you think about in, in your own families right there are different things that you want to do but your parents they have so much money that they bring in, right? So would they love to take you to Disneyland three times a year? I'm sure they would, but they have to buy groceries. They gotta pay for the mortgage. They gotta pay the car bill. So when you have a certain pool of money, then you gotta figure out how do we, as fairly as possible, distribute this money around? That's a very good way to answer it. I like that. Yeah. Good question. And you came up with that question. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were ready for yeah, you. You, you yeah. have no questions. Yeah, no, I don't need. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm here. All right, we're going to keep it rolling. Who has another one? All right, coming over. Um, my name is Shanta, and are there any plans to increase support for local businesses in the area since many of them are closing down? Right. Okay. So, uh, well, could you repeat the question, Bruce? Yeah, it was just uh, support for local businesses since they're closing down. Is there a plan to help them? Oh, okay. Want me to start? Yeah. Um, so we do have a lot that we do to support local businesses. Um, the commissioners meet frequently with different business leaders. Um, we have an economic development commission that is comprised of business leaders from, from different industries throughout the county to give us their perspective. We have the Chamber of Commerce. We have uh, different funds that are, are available to help businesses that are starting and growing. Uh, for example, uh, we have the Economic Development Incentive Fund where we can make either grants or loans uh, to businesses. And so a grant would be something they would not have to pay back. A loan is something they would have to pay back. Um, um, and in exchange for funding these, um, they'll agree that they're going to be able to employ so many people um, and bring new things to the economy, uh, new, more money into the economy. Uh, but one of the um, things that we try not to do, though, is some businesses are going to go out of business because the business is not working. And that's, that's part of the, the, the system, the capitalism system. Um, so we, uh, we don't want to prop up a business that would otherwise not be successful. If we can help a business that says, look, I could, um, so there was, there's a guy who has um, a coffee roasting business here and he says, this is, I'm able to sell so much coffee because I can roast it in this machine I have. I could do so much more if I had a bigger coffee roaster, um, but I'm small and I can't afford to do that. If I could do that, I'd increase my sales, I'd be able to hire some people. And this is a, a true example. Is this overseas? Uh, yes, the open seas, right. Open so seas, we were able yeah. to give him some money. He bought a bigger roaster. He's now able to, to supply more coffee. He's actually supplying coffee to local businesses. He ships coffee outside. Um, and for every pound of coffee, I think he's, he has a uh, certain percentage of, of clean water that he then sends to a developing nation where they have um, issues with clean water. So that's a really neat side aspect of what he does. So we were able to then help a business that without that resource, he wasn't able to get to the next level. but but he had a solid business plan. Um, as for other businesses, one of the, the, the biggest things everybody can do, um, shop, shop your local businesses. Um, Commissioner Phil and I do that. We go to local businesses. We try to buy from local businesses. If you can get it here in Queen Anne's County, don't go across the bridge. Don't go to Easton to get it. Buy, buy it right here and make sure you're taking care of those local businesses. And if there's a, a shop that you really like, tell your friends about it. Tell their parents about it. And that's how word of mouth will get around and more people will go there. I think one of the most important things to, that, that Chris had mentioned was this economic development fund that's available um, and and if anybody is interested in finding out more about that program and how it works they can reach out to our economic development mm -hmm. director um, Heather Tonelli um, and she can be located at our county website but um, you know we're, we're always looking for opportunities to help promote our local businesses but that as Chris said takes takes the citizens of Queen Anne's County to support our local I mean you don't see on the back of your jerseys when you guys play youth sports, you don't see Amazon back there. You know, you see Centerville National Bank, or you see the different businesses that are located here in our county that continue to support our youth programs all the time. So give back to the community and shop local. Yeah, I know as, as a TV station, that's one of the things we offer. We actually go to all the local businesses, and we make TV spots for all the, all the local businesses for free. That's just something that we offer. So we'll go and we'll make a commercial or we'll stop by, do interviews, just to highlight the business for the people so they can learn about. What are you, what are you looking at, Jack? What are you, who is it? <laughs> what, what do you see out there that's more important than me talking, Jack? 
<laughs> it's all right, Jack. It's okay. Your friends are out there. I'm not as cool as your friends. All right. Anyway, that's local business, but we do do a lot as the county to try to help out on all fronts. Next question. I know I called you out, Jack. It's okay. Um, hi, Rain again. So um, how are county commissioners able to juggle handling both executive branch and legislative branch stuff? We have great staff. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So, um, so uh, Commissioner uh, Chris had mentioned earlier about uh, the different um, departments and uh, in, in county government and um, often we get emails and texts and phone calls from citizens that have questions about a process or questions about something that that uh, takes place in our county. Um, and we rely heavily on staff to, to give us the information and data that we need to make good decisions. Um, I, I would have to say probably staff is the 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 yeah the big tool for us. One of the things I, I knew before I became a commissioner, but I, I've learned it more since then is how excellent the county employees are. I mean, they, they really are. <clears throat> they they are e extremely knowledgeable. They care a whole lot about what goes on, um, and it. it if you got a question, you call up any of the departments, they're going to take the call, they're going to give you the answer, um, whether it's us or even just a citizen. And we would not be able to do what we do without that excellent support staff. And our 36th district delegation. So right. Um, right now, if you're not aware, and I'm sure Mrs. C has made sure you guys are aware if you're not, but you, your state delegates uh, are in session in Annapolis. Those are your lawmakers right now. And, and they started session last week. Um, and they're in session for 90 question? days. Is it getting into your question? No. Okay. okay. So, um, <laughs> so our 36... Jack's about to knock someone out. <laughs> Jack's getting hyped. <laughs> so our 36th district delegation um, is a big help for us in Annapolis. Uh, we're here as elected officials in our county looking out for what's best for us, but so is our, our 36th district delegation, which consists of a delegate from Caroline County and Queen Anne's County, um, Kent County. and Kent County uh, and then we have uh, Senator Steve Hershey who is the senator that sits in this district so we've got a lot of help in Annapolis that's actually going on ironically right now. Cool. Go on, keep it moving. Next question. All right, come back around. All right, so my name is Tyler. And are there any plans to move more businesses to the southern part of Route 8? If not, are there any plans to connect this part of the island to businesses better? Mm. Cool. Move businesses to the southern part of Canada? Yeah, I, I, so that would be sort of a, a zoning issue, right? And mm -hmm. we are going to be coming on to what's called the comp plan. Um, so every every 10 years, right? So the comprehensive plan is kind of your 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 Bible or your roadmap, if you will, of how you're going to grow, what kind of growth you're going to have, where you're going to have that growth. And the state requires that you update your comprehensive plan <clears throat> no sooner than seven years, but no later than 10 years. So this is actually the cycle right. that we're, we're, we'll bring our 10th year in 2020 for this comprehensive plan that was created back in, in 2010. So, um, so as part of that process would be the decision of wh where are areas where there is not business that we think there should be business or where should there be less business, where should houses be. That's part of the process. Um, so within that, I'm sure they will be looking at, you know, is, is there other areas where you could build a new business park or something like that? Uh, but at the current time, there I don't think there's any plans for it down here other than the, the Tyler, the business is, park. That, is that your name, Tyler? So what do you live down there? Yeah. So like, what would you what like? What business to, would you like? What would you like to see down there? I don't know, just like shops and stuff because we have to travel like pretty far to like all the way up, all the way up. Yeah. To the so end. It would be kind of nice if we had more stuff. Yeah. Think of what he could do with all that time too. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I imagine there's probably some businesses that that would be a good fit uh, down there. Um, I imagine with our economic development uh, commission, we could probably identify some, but you've got to have somebody who's willing to want to move down there. You know, you've got to have a business owner or somebody, an entrepreneur that says, hey, you know what would be great down here at the end of Roman Coke would be a bait shop, you know, or, you know, something that is conducive um, to, to the southern part of, of Route 8. Keep in mind, too, there's some folks that don't want anything down Route 8, that sure. they're okay coming north. Right, so that you, know, you you gotta try to make sure you're weighing both sides so that you come out with something that best serves the community. Cool, good question, yeah, Tyler. Uh, some public hearings coming up soon on that 2020 comp plan where people can come
come out and provide it? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, so George brings up a good point. Um, our, our planning and zoning office is the one that has been tasked with updating our comprehensive plan. Uh, we have some great folks that work in planning and zoning um, that have a tremendous amount of experience. Um, more specifically, uh, Amy Murdoch, uh, Murdoch, who we just brought, brought in, she was the uh, the planning and zoning director in Kent County and and is now with us and she's going to be uh, kind of spearheading That's the right. updating of our comprehensive plan um, but the process uh, the intent of the process to be extremely transparent um, so if there's anybody that has some some ideas or concerns that they want to share uh, regarding the updating of the comprehensive plan there are people that do already and people that have some ideas can certainly reach out to our planning and zoning office and reach out to those questions or concerns to Amy Mordock. Excellent. All right, how many more questions we got on that paper? We're winding down. Just one more? Who is it? I had a <laughs> Finish feeling. up with Jack. I felt like... <laughs> You're finishing up with Jack. I felt like Jack. it had to be. He was, he was anxious to get his yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, it had to be. All right. So No pressure, Jack. Yeah. My name's Jack, and the question is, how can we make the bay less polluted? Less polluted. Right. Uh, one more oysters. <laughs> more oysters. Uh, I think part of the problem, the challenges that we face, and, um, and it's funny you should say that because actually the the governor in the state of Maryland is suing the EPA and the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, you folks, uh, you you guys familiar with the Conowingo Dam? Okay, so the Susquehanna River runs down and it starts in New York. Right. As a matter of fact, Cooperstown. Good. Baseball fans here? So the headwaters of the, <laughs> uh, the Susquehanna River um, passes through Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York, and, and, reaches, and reaches Maryland and the Conowingo Dam. Um, and with it, it brings... Um, All their trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Phosphorus, uh, nitrogen, uh, sediment, uh, sediment. And, and so when we have a huge storm event and they have to open up the dam, the Susquehanna Dam, uh, the Conowingo Dam to relieve that pressure, all that flows down into our bay and all the hard work that, that our farmers are doing um, and, and our local elected officials in reducing the nitrogen, phosphorus and sediment loads into our bay to make it cleaner, it, it's a challenge for us. We're doing what we, we have to do. We're, we're, we're taking the steps to reduce the loads here in, in our watershed. But for every two or three steps that we take forward, um, that water that's coming from the Susquehanna River into our bay kind of defeats all our hard work. Um, we have what they call a WIP plan or watershed implementation plan and we've been uh, tasked with that uh, clear back to when I first served in 2011 to 2014 and the goal was uh, created by the state Maryland State Environmental Protection Agency in the federal level to reduce the nitrogen and phosphorus and sediment loads into the bay because that's what's making her sick. Um, so we're doing, we put systems and procedures in place to reduce those loads that are going in, but again the challenge is what's coming from the states uh, north of us that ultimately affect our bay when that water reaches us. But we're working hard. Right. And, and when somebody builds um, something new in the county, there's requirements for stormwater management so that that water doesn't just uh, run off their land and go into the bay. Uh, there's different retention ponds where, where the water will stay and get cleaned out before it enters back into the system. That's another thing that's done. Um, oysters are huge for cleaning up the bay. I think one oyster can filter 55 gallons a day. Um, so we're also supportive of the watermen in getting more oysters put out into the bay um, because it not only helps our watermen, but it also help to clean up the bay. Great, cool. All right, so we've been sitting here for a while. Did anyone think of any random questions while we've been sitting here? Or we got everything out? You guys, those are great questions. You did a wonderful job. Do you guys have any questions for them? Who's your favorite commissioner? <laughs> Other than... Than yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so I've got a question for you. One that you can answer. Um, Jack, your favorite cookie? Chocolate chip cookie. Jack, get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Georgia? Yeah, there we go. We done. Georgia? My favorite cookie? 
Your favorite cookie? Sugar cookie. Sugar cookie. Okay, answer Georgia. You can stay. <laughs> <laughs> too many people say. Too many people the say. Answer is M and M cookie. Need, oh, that's a good one. You need to break out of the mold, Jack. Be your own man. <laughs> Make up a cookie. Go with thin mints. Th what? <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jack. Jack's done with me. He's like a get, TV get in line. Guy. Yeah, this TV's got to go. So take all their money, put it in schools. So, so truly, to finish up, you guys did a wonderful job, uh, Mrs. C. Uh, a great job selecting the kids. These were all great questions. I actually have one more question. If we wrap it up, have any of you guys ever been to a commissioner's meeting? Okay. Wow. Well, if you'd like to plan a field trip to one of our commissioner meetings, um, come, you probably don't want to sit through the whole thing because you might find it quite boring. But it's neat to come and see and get to see the people testifying um, and hear from the different agencies about what's going on. But I would encourage all of you to come to any commissioner's meeting. They're the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. 5.30, the uh, Liberty Building in Centerville. Maybe you can let them come up and say something. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. If you have, you know, so uh, seriously, if you guys have an issue and concerns, um, you know, the commissioner's meeting and the press and public comment portion of our agenda is in the beginning and one in the end as well. So if you want to get there in the beginning, get there at 530. It's probably 540. Mm -hmm. And we open up the microphone to press and public comment. Um, it's not a Q&A situation where you can ask a question and get an answer, but it's an opportunity for you to share your concerns, your wants, and, and your perspective on what you think would make the quality of your life as students in Quinn Anne's County better. Yeah. So exercise that right and come and see us. Just, yeah, I mean, no matter what age you are, it's your county, and we want to hear from everybody. Yeah, excellent. Except for Bruce. Right, yeah, I don't count. Again, Dr. Kane and the Board of Education, thank you, Dr. McCoy. We appreciate it. And a big round of applause for you guys. Yeah.